Chair recognizes the uh, gentleman from Page, Representative Anderson. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I wasn't certain I was going to speak out of but it felt at some point in time when I had a colleague from Mr. This is one of those, uh, as I said last night, two or four big social issues that divide our, our nation. That's why I'm debating it, because it is important. It's as important, perhaps, as the more normal job. And it's difficult because we all know people who are homosexual. They may be our neighbors. They may be our friends, our colleagues, our co workers. And we have a sense of
The courts are divided on this. The Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, very recently, which is Court of Appeals, the U.S. Supreme Court, and is a highly regarded appellate court, reached the opposite decision from the Iowa Supreme Court based on application of constitutional legal principles. Representative Abdul Samad, many of your African American brothers that I've spoken to have a different sense of your history as it relates to the homosexual history. As does the Constitution, as does the U.S. Supreme Court. Because they have seen race as, as requiring and demanding a high level of scrutiny when we pass laws that affect you. Person based on their skin color. And we throw them out. And, and we should. They fail to meet what's called the strict scrutiny standard of constitutional inter interpretation under legal protection. Other laws, we, we apply what's called a rational basis test. It's a low level. But it's what we pass all the time here. Whether or not a particular community gets an enterprise zone or doesn't. Rational basis for the legislature to pass a law. Nearly every law we pass meets that, and the courts defer to that. The Iowa Supreme Court landed in the middle of it when they looked at the history of the homosexual community. And so the debate is not whether they should get the heightened scrutiny that we've seen with the respect to slavery and African American tragic history of this country. But whether it should be the lower level of rational basis or that mid level. And that's where the division is. The Eighth Circuit has ruled that the courts should defer to the legislature because there is a rational basis, because homosexuals and heterosexuals in a marriage context are not similarly situated because homosexual couples cannot produce children. The heterosexual couples can. That's what is, that's the objective reality that's called marriage. That's the issue. We hear there will be no harm. What's the harm in having homosexual committed relations, relationships be recognized as valid? And if we don't know how to respond to that, what is the harm to me? I think the harm is broader than its impact on me as a person. Will it affect other marriages? Will passing the law allowing homosexual marriages won't affect other marriages? I think if we take that argument to its logical extreme and we say, well, if the gender doesn't matter, does the number? And we see legal professors and political pundits right in highly regarded media outlets that if we erode the gender requirement of marriage, there is no rational basis to find the number. So we open up the whole possibility of constitutional recognition of polygamous relationships. That's a slippery slope. And I don't know where the logic is to draw it. Should these other polygamous, we wouldn't recognize incestuous relationships between some consenting adult brothers and sisters. It would have raised up within us disgust, and we can't accept that. And so we draw lines, we define marriage. The other harms that I thought about relate to religious liberty. We've heard a lot last night about people who particularly stay with a religious perspective. And I think there are your time is expired.